Everybody know I probably cut out halfway through. Y'all know how I'm rocking. <laughs> today was a hell of a day. Everybody said today was a hell of a day. Lord, it's the multi million in the flesh, yeah, man. And bro, right now we just preparing for a speaking engagement, you know what I'm saying, man? I ain't have a speaking engagement in a little minute. So I just went up this morning, just really just going over my notes of what I'm going to say, how I'm going to break it down, you know what I'm saying? And today I'm going to be kind of speaking to a different group of people. So I said today I really ain't even going to stand up and do a whole yeah, like... I said, I'll probably just sit down, really talk to them, and try to formulate some questions for them to answer. You feel what I'm saying? Because this is going to be a freshman class, and so I just want them to fill me out. I ain't going to do too much for them. But, man, today I got a speaking engagement. I got about I got about five heads laid on, and I got that test at 12 o'clock, bro. So y'all just pray for me on that test, man. I know I'm going to do all right. I'm going to do good. You feel me? But right now, we just we just locking in right now, man. I hope and pray. Oh, y'all feeling good, man. I hope and pray by the end of this vlog, you hear me? Y'all grinning from ear to ear just like me, man. <laughs> but y'all know I'm going to check in with y'all, bro. I'll probably take y'all into the into the, the speaking engagement with me. Just like, bow, yeah. It's, yeah, my name's Jackson. I'll see you. <laughs> but, man, no, man. But I'm going to holler at y'all. <laughs> Um, yeah, man. Stop playing. Y'all already know how I'm rocking. Speaking engagement. Uh, -huh. you feel me? We finna go in there and talk how I talk. Like I told y'all, I'm gonna be on some different time. And I said, I probably just sit down with them that day. You know what I'm saying? Really sit down, talk my talk. I probably had y'all sit up in the corner or something. <laughs> you remember, man? I'm really cool, man. I'm a little excited, you know what I'm saying? It is a new group of people I'm speaking to, so I'm pretty excited, man. But we're going to go in there and do our thing. I'm really finna walk over there right now, to be honest. got to do my... I'm about to turn up a little before I leave, but uh, we finna go ahead on and get into it, man. I'm going to holler at y'all. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can tell, my pants really hugging me, so I had to take that walk today. My pants was way too tight to be riding a bike. You heard me? <laughs> you heard me? We done touched down. about the experience at UL Lafayette. He is a um, senior, about to graduate, what, less than a month? Yeah, um, so yeah. mm -hmm. um, he is doing a lot of great things on campus and outside of campus as well. Um, he has his hands in a bunch of entrepreneur um, businesses and whatnot. Um, so give a round of applause. Make sure you put your cell phones, laptops, everything up for Mr. Drexel. All right. Hey, I'm done. All right, like I said, my name is Drexel Narcisse, and my presentation is almost like yours. So for the most part, I'm going to start off with a who am I. I'm going to tell you all what I have going on today and pretty much how I plan to get on to my next steps. And it was just like something just kept stopping me from preparing for this speech, y'all. Like I started speaking last year in classrooms, and I would prepare a, a major speech. I would do the most. I'd be running all throughout the classroom, but something just wouldn't let me do it today. So I think the best thing for y'all to do is just understand and, and listen to my, how my college experience was, all right? So first things first, like I said, my name is Drexel Narcis. I'm an entrepreneur. They also call me the multi-millionaire in the flesh. I even, you might even catch them calling me big time a Drexel. But I'm a barber. I'm an entrepreneur. I sell clothes. Uh, I got a podcast, and I, I be vlogging for real. So if y'all peep the camera, y'all can say what's up if y'all want to. <laughs> but pretty, pretty much, I just live life on my terms, and... I feel as though it's important for every single one of y'all to, 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 to be able to have that opportunity. 
You get what I'm saying? So how that opportunity comes along is just by simply working hard. So if y'all have a piece of paper, oh, go ahead, Mama. Oh, uh, why vlog? I feel like it's kind of like, why not see the day in the life of an entrepreneur? I'm an entrepreneur. A lot of people don't know how an entrepreneur move. And so I was like, man, let me just put it all on camera. You feel me? So oh, I thought you were going to say something. Oh, yeah. No, I, what I would say is inspire other people to just simply live life on their terms. So like whenever I start my videos, something I always say at the beginning of my videos is I hope and pray by the end of this video, y'all grinning from ear to ear just like me. If you don't notice, I'm always smiling for the most part. You get what I'm saying? But it's like whatever you're doing, if you're a teacher, if you sell clothes, if you cut hair, if you if you if you work in the cafeteria somewhere, at least do it with a smile on your face. At least do it from your heart for the most part, because I feel as though that's what I'm just doing out here. A lot of people uh, might call me a robot because I wake up every morning at five, six o'clock in the morning, like nothing. Even on weekends, y'all, I just get up early in the morning. Some people call me a robot, but I feel as though if you're doing something that you truly love, it's easy to just do it on command. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. But for the most part, um, like I said, I was a real I was real unprepared for the speech. So this morning I really jotted up a whole lot of this. And truth be told, that's how a lot of your college experience going to be. You're going to have times where you unprepared. It's going to be times where it's not going to go your way. But it's really not about what you go through, y'all. It's really about what you do about it. What's your what's your reaction to that to that action? What's your reaction? So for the most part, it's like, man, like. Me going to college, I wasn't necessarily ready for this college thing. It was like sooner, and I'll tell y'all this from the from the heart, like as soon as I came to college, like this July, so and matter of fact, as soon as I got accepted, my daddy lost his job. So it was like, oh Lord, something something happened. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna lay down and cry about it, or, 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 or can I just can I just take initiative in my own life? So as soon as my dad lost his job, I felt like it was important for me to just take this cutting hair thing serious. I learned how to cut hair off YouTube for the most part. I never went to school for it. I never, I never took classes or anything for it. I simply learned by practicing on myself and watching YouTube videos. So once my dad lost his job, I felt that it was my, it was my time to step up. It's my time to really just, like I said, take initiative in my own life. So I kid you not, Monday through, well, really, whenever I first started off in college, I mean, freshman year, Sunday to Sunday, I cut hair. Sunday to Sunday, to Sunday I never rest. I, I felt as though like it was important for me to get what I needed to get, because if, if you don't come out here in this world and make it happen, y'all, if you don't do it, who going to do it? In reality, if you don't take the necessary steps to get what you want, nobody else going to do it for you. And I understood that. So as y'all, y'all, this y'all, y'all just y'all finish our first semester, right? Facts. So like understand that, like you got to come out here every day and be an active participant in your own success. Mama not going to do it for you no more. You're grown. Daddy not going to do it for you. Your friends, they, they might not always be there to help. So you got to take that initiative and you got to be an active participant in your own success. So, so that, was, that was something that I had to do for myself. And I could tell y'all this, like affirmations. Do anybody in the room do affirmations? Facts. Facts. But I could tell y'all, like, if, if, if there was, if, if somebody asked me, Drexel, what's that secret sauce you got? I could really say affirmations, y'all. So let me give y'all a little story time real quick. So um, in high school, I had a girlfriend for I had a girlfriend for like three years for the most part. And then when a pandemic hit, we was away from each other. I was home, she was home, and we was we was on two different sides of the river. I'm from New Orleans, so I was on the East Bank, she was on the West Bank. And so pretty much like we didn't really see each other. And ended up freshman year, she came here to visit me a couple of times. And then ended up, I, was, I ain't gonna lie, y'all, I was a bad person. So I ain't gonna say I was a perfect person, but I used to cheat on her in relationships. I, I was a bad person. And so ended up, she told me, I'm never coming see you no more. And she ended up standing on that. And y'all, I went through a week of depression. I was hurt. I wasn't cutting hell. And ended up, I'm scrolling on Twitter one night. I'm really like crying, y'all. Laying in the bed crying. I'm scrolling on Twitter one night. And I came across this affirmation. It was a tweet at the time. The tweet said, I don't chase, I attract. Whatever is for me will come. And it just, ooh, just, just stuck to me. And, and, and every time, like, I would look myself in the mirror, I, I catch myself crying. I can't even look at myself in the eyes. But I would just constantly repeat over and over to myself, I don't chase, I attract. Whatever is for me will come. Crying and everything in the shower. I don't chase, I attract. 
whatever it's for me. Well, you feel what I'm saying? But it was just like, man, well, if somebody ever asked me what that secret sauce was, I could really tell y'all affirmations. Because peep this here. Our words create worlds. Our words create worlds. Whatever you speak out into this atmosphere, best believe, best believe you're going to be face to face with it. So understand your words create worlds. I had to tell myself every day that I don't chase our track. I don't chase our track. Whatever is for me will come. And man, I'm telling y'all, after, after that affirmation, it came with, oh, I'm going to have my own business. After that affirmation came with, oh, I'm going to be my own boss. And continuously and surely, slowly but surely, I got the things that I, that I repeated out into this atmosphere. You feel what I'm saying? So if y'all could take anything from me today, man, just start writing down your, your affirmation. Start writing down what you actually want to achieve out here in this world. You feel what I'm saying? Because that's a part of, like, that, that's, that's being an active participant in your life. Like, you want to graduate college? Like, I can tell y'all right now, I'm graduating early. I'm graduating the semester early. All because I put it on a vision board, y'all. I said, man, I'm about to graduate class of 2023. I came in, I came in the school 2020. But I made it up in my mind, you know what, I'm about to graduate early. I'm about to get this out the way. And because I, I, I feel as though, I feel as though, because I wrote that down on a vision board and I was able to visualize that every day, I was able to see that every day that I was going to graduate, oh, it was, it was nothing for me to come out here and do. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm, I'm telling y'all right now, just start writing down your goals. Just start right now what you want to really accomplish out here. Because I'm going to tell y'all right now, your goals and your dreams, they could give a damn about your excuses. Your goals and your dreams could give a damn about your excuses. Lord knows if, if I got a line of clients who, who come and get their hair cut, they don't want to hear, oh, Drexel had a bad day. They don't want to hear, oh, 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 Drexel not feeling well because they didn't pay for their haircut. They, they, they didn't book that appointment. So your goals and your dreams could give a damn about your excuses. So it's important for you to write down what you actually want to accomplish out here. And I and I'm I'm so I'm so big on writing stuff down because I feel as though when you visualize it, when you see something, you don't have no other choice but to go at it, but to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like I could tell y'all, like whenever, like before I go to bed, right? Before I go to bed, what I do is I sit down at my desk and I write on my sticky note what I gotta do the the, the next day. Really, just so when I wake up in the morning, it ain't no second guessing what I gotta do. You could just wake up and accomplish it. You feel what I'm saying? But Feel like I'm doing a lot of spitball. And is there any questions, real quick? So you're a senior in chemistry, all of this. Yeah. Time. Yes. And uh, so you cut clothes and you cut hair. Uh, are you going to transition away from this entrepreneurship and sell it? Uh, I guess I never told y'all what I want to actually do. So actually, my plan is to be a a teacher. So uh, I actually want to be a teacher. I can tell y'all, I had like a this past summer was almost like a life changing experience because. Um, and what I can tell y'all all do is go on Handshake and start looking for uh, internships. I went on Handshake. I scrolled on Handshake for the longest. I ended up landing an internship in Atlanta. So I stood in Atlanta for two months this past summer. And truth be told, I didn't want to do it at first, y'all. And it was, it was a teacher internship. And the first two weeks, right, first two weeks, man, I ain't going to tell y'all no lie. I was low-key depressed because I'm so used to cutting hair. I'm so used to making money every day. When I wasn't making money every day, it kind of it kind of took a toll on me. We was real life getting paid. We was real life getting paid seven hundred fifty dollars every two weeks, but we stood on Georgia State campus. Georgia State wanted five fifty every two weeks, so we living off two hundred dollars every two weeks for real. So it really took a toll on me. And so throughout training, before the kids that came, before we started teaching for real, throughout training, I was depressed. I was sad because I wasn't making no money. But as soon as the kids came, it was like a I don't even know what you call it, but it was just like an effect that happened on me. And it was like that depression just went away because I felt in love with literally doing this, standing up in front of a classroom and, and, and teaching. You feel what I'm saying? But because I got my feet wet, because I tried something that I wasn't used to doing, you feel what I'm saying? Because I just went against the grain of what I was already doing, you know, being an entrepreneur, I was stuck in my ways, y'all. I ain't going to tell y'all no lie. Uh, I, could, I could probably say math. Because math is so hard and just being a, a male figure in a classroom, I know how much weight that holds. I feel as though I, I'm all right with, with taking on that, uh, that challenge. Okay. Uh, middle school, for the most part, because I know in middle school, I dealt with a lot of peer pressure. So um, I have to say middle school. I ain't going to tell y'all no lie. Atlanta, man, y'all got Y'all ever been to Atlanta? Facts. Atlanta's so fire, y'all. I can't tell y'all no lie. Like, 
it was, it was life changing. For the most part, it's a lot of entrepreneurship going on out there. So I, I knew how to operate out there. Like I had a, I was able to make connections out there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Cutting hair, I feel like that's something I love. Like I could just, I just do it for real, you know. But boom. So how I plan on getting to our next step. So this is kind of like how y'all, I, I had bought, I brought in my goals for real for the most part. So for the most part, this is something that y'all could take into account of when y'all go home. All right. So how do I plan on getting my next steps? Simply by holding yourself accountable. And, you know, I write stuff down to hold myself accountable because if you see it every day, you know, you're going to look in the mirror every day. If I tell myself, oh, I got these non-negotiables that I got to accomplish. When you see that, you just automatically got to go out, go out and do that. So pretty much I'm going to tell y'all, like, whatever you want to accomplish. And I know for me, I got my next nine months written out. I got these nine months written out because I know if I see this every day, it's going to be a constant motivation because y'all know sometimes when it's raining outside, y'all don't feel like going to class. Uh, you know, like whenever things not going your way for two weeks or to a month straight, it just seemed like you're going to fail. Whenever you got that negative feeling inside of you, you got to you got to reach back and find some motivation. You feel me? So this is pasted on the back of my door. Every time I get sad, every time I got a negative feeling inside of me, I got to. Oh, let me remind myself for the next nine months. Let me let me remind myself of what I want to accomplish in August, because Lord knows if I can't get over today, if I allow today to take over me, Lord, I ain't going to never reach that. I ain't going to never reach my dreams and my goals. You feel what I'm saying? So you got to constantly have that self-motivation in order for you to get to the point that you want to reach. No. And that that's kind of why I explained the story with my girlfriend, because literally after I started affirmations, I saw that, oh, your words create world, worlds. Oh, your, your words can can be face to face with you. So so after that happened with my uh with my ex girlfriend, bro, I literally affirmation has just been a way of life for me. How do you measure your progress towards your goals? Say it one time. How do you measure your progress towards your goals? Um, I I yesterday I had an interview, right? And the lady asked me the same thing, and I could really say, just put your head down and work. Ain't don't worry about measuring it. Put your head down and work because. If you if you constantly look at the scoreboard every time you work and that's a constant distraction, what you need to do is put a blanket over the scoreboard and just work. Because, for example, right last this is probably two summers ago, two summers ago. What I did was I used to and I ain't going to say worked out every day, but I worked out a strong four out of the seven days of the week. So every day I would work out. But I had I had I, I I'll record myself. I'll record myself every time I worked out. So I posted every day, posted every day. And when I came back to school, a teacher saw me. And he was like, hey, Drexel, man, I saw your videos. Let me let me holler at you. So ended up we set up a meeting and I went saw him the next day. He said, Drexel, man, because of those workout videos you posted every day, I lost 13 pounds. I said, what? You know, just simply putting my head down and work. And I was able to help that man. I was able to he, he gave me two speaking engagements off that. And off of them two speaking engagements came five more after that. So what I can say is how I measure that success, simply just put your head down and work. Don't worry about measuring it. Don't worry about looking at the scoreboard because the scoreboard, that's just a constant distraction. It's going to constantly distract you. What's like the biggest goal you have right now? The biggest goal I have right now, I could really say just being an example because I, I saw how just whenever I taught this past summer, the ratio for teachers, the ratio was like 50 to 7. 50 women, seven guys. So it was like, as a, as a man, you had to be an example. You had to carry yourself correctly because they got, el they got other little fellas watching you. So for the most part, I could really say like being a great example. Um, for the most part, I could, I could probably say like a public school, probably like inner city for the most part. Cause I feel as though like my character, I feel like it's easy to get along with. Like, I feel like y'all rocking with me. Y'all feel me in here. So, like, I think my character is easy to get along with. So, inner city public school for the most part. And what else I got for y'all? All right. So, and I, I y'all know I'm just spitballing right now. Um, <laughs> uh, something I could uh, also tell y'all pretty much is, like, not allowing your, your, oh, not allowing the things that happen to you to dictate who you are. You know what I'm saying? You know, in college, this and this happened, or like 
You might get caught up with this person or you might get in trouble with doing this. But it's like, don't allow your situation to define you because you are greater than your situation. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like, she started off with who am I? Like, I started off with who am I? Like, it's important to know who you are as a person so that whenever he or she got something to say about you, it just rub off your shoulder. So, like, I think it's a, I think it's real important, like, while you're in college, while you're in school, like, while you really, I'll say, away from your parents, it's important to learn who you are as a person. Because I saw how, whenever I got to school, I saw how it was, like, important to be your own person because I came to school by myself. Man, I didn't I didn't come to school with no friends, so it was like, dang, I had to find myself something to eat. I had to wash my own clothes because I saw when I was home, I was a real little boy. My mom used to wake me up. My mom used to do everything for me. So it was like coming to school and really just figuring out who I am as a person was the most important thing that I could have ever done on this college campus. That was, that was the best thing any one of us could do as of being a college student, man. For real, for real. But I ain't going to tell y'all no lie. Oh, yeah, good. Uh, truth be told, I always played sports in high school, and I want I wanted to come to school and play sports like everybody, but uh, I wasn't that good. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to uh, I wanted to be a sports agent for the most part, so really wanted to uh, take my talents there. I felt as though I could handle the business side, so I wanted to be a sports agent, but ended up. Uh, yeah, I mean, some people be like, oh, you want to be a PE teacher? But, like, no, not really. Like, I'd really rather be in a classroom, like, like on this time. But, uh, my kinesiology, for the most part, I'm really just finishing it, y'all, just getting a degree. But I probably, I really want to go, go on out and get my, uh, my master's and then maybe go on and get my, uh, my doctorate for the most part. But, any other questions? Uh, I think my passion, like, it's important to really come out here in this world no matter what you do. Like, you don't even have to be an entrepreneur. Like, your passion is the most important thing you could have out here because, like, I hate people who don't like their job. Like, y'all know when y'all go to the, like, if y'all just go to a fast food restaurant and the, if the worker don't care about your, their job, the burger just gonna be any kind of way. Your fries gonna be all out the bag. It's gonna be like, bro, don't, don't go in there. Don't step in on them people's job and not love what you're doing, not have a passion for what you're doing. So I can say what sets me apart is literally my passion. Like, I'm going to always rep myself, big time a Drexel, like, big time a Drexel, like, it's going to always be on me for the most part, so. How do you plan to transition from a college student to someone who, like, and how do you transition from a college student to going into like how like what are your plans for that are you gonna keep like where like break and do something else or just like try and go straight in? uh well these see what i had wrote down i i kind of just uh figured that out for myself so after i uh leave school um i'm graduating in december and then january to may <laughs> i really plan on uh, going home, I don't plan on getting a job. I really plan on indulging in myself again, like I said, just figuring out who I want to be. I heard in this book, Essentialism, in Essentialism, uh, the man said, um, no real work could get done without alone time. So while I'm at home, like my my sister going to be out here. So I'm going to really have a house to myself and I'm going to really just indulge in what I really want to do, what I want to see myself, what kind of teacher do I want to see myself as? So I'm going to really just dig down deep into myself. And uh, really, I want to find some passive income. Y'all know teachers don't necessarily pull in the biggest bag. So I'm really trying to figure out some passive income. A mentor? I, I feel like like I could just, I feel like so far as on like social media and stuff like that, I feel like I'm already doing that type of thing. So I could, yeah, I could definitely see myself, yeah. And I wouldn't mind it. Like, I, I appreciate teaching. Like, like I love it for real. Uh, I see your YouTube multi-millionaire. Yeah. Uh, is that a goal or is that already? It's, it's a goal and it's a, and it's a way of life for real because I don't know if y'all heard what I said. I said your words create worlds. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I got that out of a song for a juvenile. I said you're looking at a multi-millionaire in the flesh. And so. I, I, I heard him say that, and I was like, dang, that's so fire. So I started putting it on T-shirts. I started posting it on Instagram. And so it's like, man, like, 
I'm a multi-millionaire in the flesh, and I feel like every one of y'all are multi-millionaires in the flesh. I'm not even multi-millionaires, but whatever you want accomplished, you can knock off the multi-millionaire part and just put in the flesh. I'm a teacher in the flesh. I'm a graduate in the flesh. You know what I'm saying? So. What would I do with the money? Uh, I, I got a lot of ways of wanting to invest, but I feel like all off of this or what I talk about, I feel like it's all root off of my why. You know what I'm saying? I feel like every one of us, we got to have a why out here. And like, I got a little sibling and like, I want to be an example for her because like, like, I feel like I'm a, I'm a good person. Like, I feel confident in who I am. So like, I really want to give back. I really want to do for my community. Like this weekend, I can tell y'all, like I'm doing a, a turkey drive for my community. On last year, um, I ran into a little guy. His name was Ivory. Shouts out to Ivory. You hear me? But Ivory did a turkey drive when he was in high school for his community. And I was really inspired by it. And so last year, I decided to call up some people. And I was able to fundraise. And I was able to make some money to do a turkey drive for my community. So this weekend, I'm doing the same thing. But I really want to give back. I feel like you you really get what you give out here in this world. And I appreciate all the love I get. You know, Mr. Telvin just asked me to speak to y'all. Like, I'm not saying I'm not nobody, but just off strength of him recognizing what I'm doing out here, like, I appreciate the love I get. So it's a it's a must for me to come in here and give 100%. So just off strength of the love I get from my community, I'm going to definitely give back to my community. Pour into maybe putting a library there. Pour into, you know, just paying their bills or something like that, you know? And we'll, yeah, the, the, uh, uh, well, whenever I first came here, I wasn't really like this for real. Like I was a, I was a little boy at home. My mom used to wake me up, feed me, all that. So I wasn't, I didn't have no initiative on my life. So I could say like, shouts out to UL for bringing me, for bringing this out of me. You feel me? But I say if I, if I had to redo it, I matter what I went to LSU or maybe a bigger school out of state. But you know was cool. You ever yeah, well, like my freshman year, I did. Because, like, you know, we were going through COVID times for real. But, like, COVID was, like, a big factor in it, like, for me wanting to transfer. But, nah, not, never really wanting to do it or even taking the steps to do it. As far as, like, entrepreneurship, do you have, like, plans on, like, spending all that, like, while you're here? Yeah, I think whenever I go to Atlanta, I could definitely, uh, like, there's opportunity for that out there in Atlanta, I can say, because like, like out here, like if I'm chilling on the weekend, I can't necessarily go and sell my stuff here, here, and here. But whenever I was in Atlanta, I noticed that on the weekends, there's about three to four spots where you could have a pop up shop. Up there are three to four spots where you could for sure go and make some money. So I definitely say when I go out there, it'll be a big, uh, big thing to do. Wouldn't you say that like, like your line, like I don't chase abstracts? Wouldn't that work like both ways? Because, like, all these things you've been saying, like, um, how you got into, like, cutting hair, even, like, vlogging, entrepreneurship, isn't that stuff, like, at first, like, those first steps you have to, like, kind of, like, chase for that? Mm. And then all the opportunities you get from it, that's, like, attraction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I feel like you, you got to take steps in whatever you want. So far, as like, cutting hair, that just came about because the pandemic hit and we was all home. And literally... Me cutting hair wasn't even a goal. I was in the room just cutting my hair. And I did it. I just did it better than I expected. And I'm just on Snapchat. I'm playing around. I'm like, y'all come holler at me. $15. And I never stopped since. So I feel as though just me starting that, that came about. Uh, that Well, that started the podcast because I'm just simply just talking to clients. And clients are liking what I'm saying. So, you know, that that just curated. And then curated later on into me being a motivational speaker. So, I mean, yeah, it all, it all work in the same way, I feel like, though. When I retire. <laughs> <laughs> Not nah, good. If you retire from teaching, would you continue to be a Yeah, yeah, I, I love cutting hair. I like, I love cutting hair. Like, it's something, I do it every day for the most part. Like, I cut my own hair, so... I, I don't never really see me ever stopping it. Like, even when I'm in a school system and, like, I can say, like, me becoming a teacher, a big motivation for me now is probably to get my barber's license because I would love to teach that to my students. Like, this past summer, I was able to do that. 
But like, even when I get into a real school system, I won't be able to give my students that gift, that, 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 um, yeah, that gift pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so what if you get to a certain age where, like, you know, early you have also programming? Yeah. So how do you plan on overcoming that kind of work? Yeah. All right. Well, I could say as of right now, like, I'm slowly moving myself out of from behind the barber chair. Something I created was a uh, barber capes with sleeves. I don't know if y'all ever seen that before, but I have barber capes with sleeves. It's something that I created. And so pretty much um, that would be my way of working myself from behind the barber chair. But like, I don't know, you know, you just never want to see yourself stopping something that you love doing. You get me? So like, I just love cutting hair. So it's like, I just always see myself doing it. Now, when I'm 80 years old and stuff like that, hopefully I got enough money to just do what I want. Just drink daiquiris or something all day. But <laughs> yeah, man. Another one. Um, what I can say is probably take some of the workload off, but like, I love what I do so much. Not even say it's not about the money, but like, like, I just like being an impact. Like I like whenever I cut somebody here, you show them the mirror and they got a big smile on their face. Like I like, if I post a video, it's like, oh, somebody be like, man, you saved my life. Like, oh man, you, you did this for me. So I think I just like being an impact. I like having an effect on people. Uh, I, I, right, right. Well, I ain't gonna lie. I don't, I don't be messing up like that. I, I don't be messing up like that. But for the for the most part, when they don't have that big old smile on their face, I'd be like, oh man, like you straight, you like I'm gonna show them you straight. For it. But nah, I, I I be I be getting them right. They they be straight. Everybody know I probably cut out halfway through. Y'all know how I'm rocking. <laughs> you hear me? Shouts out to y'all. Shouts out. <laughs> oh, man. You hear me, bro? I ain't got to do too much talking. Y'all already know how I'm rocking. But, man, I went in there. And I did my thing. We turned up. We turned up. Yeah, we turned up. <laughs> yeah, man, bro. I went there and did my thing like I'm supposed to. You feel me? That man said that was top 10 speaking and gave me he had all year. Matter of fact, he said it's the best one. He said, he said that was that was more than a 10. Come on now, man. But went there and did my thing. You heard me? Now we finna go to the room. Really, I probably, I probably just go get in the car and go to go to uh, go to class. Got to tell you, I got that test today, so I really just got to sit down and study for the most part. I ain't lying, but man, we did good. I broke a sweat and everything. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I ended up getting hot, boy. But I wasn't even really that nervous, bro. Like I told them straight up, I'm like, I ain't even prepared. You feel me? But I felt as though the best thing for me to do is just let y'all know about my college experience. Went in there, did it. <laughs> Was they rocking with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, come on, son. They was rocking with me. Man, they ain't gonna stop asking questions. Yeah, man, went in there and did my thing. I'm mad the camera turned off, though the camera did turn off halfway. But it's all good. We did our thing and we lit. We out now. Y'all know I'm gonna holler at y'all. Stop playing. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, man. That made it back. I didn't took my clothes off that quick. <laughs> but man, I went to take my test. The test was straight. I ain't gonna take out no lie. I was, I was, I was type Gucci on it. You feel me? But man, now we back in the room. I got a 2 o'clock appointment. You feel me? Then a 3 30. Then. A uh, five o'clock, a five thirty, and a six o'clock. So, uh, we rolling. You hear me? Right now, I'm really just cooling for the most part. I'm about to just really chillax. Like I ain't, I ain't eating none today, so I probably, uh, I probably find me something to eat soon. But, uh, but man, we cool. Now I feel that weight lifted off my shoulders. Y'all prayers must have worked. You know what I'm saying for me to pass that test. So, man, I'm, I'm chilling right now, and uh, 
And y'all already know how I'm rocking. Should a lot so uh, hold up, hold up. Well, with me, I, I think it's way more understandable where I want, where I think I've been and you've been and you've been a person just historically. Like I've always given you this credit. I've gone through some tough weeks. Yeah, you man. Know I hope uh, y'all feeling good. Especially like I'm cool, so then, bro. And I remember Waiting on three more, I three more, like, and then we done.
the, the poor year? Yeah, the poor year, man. Keep your stomach east, man, just in case you need to take a shot like I do right now. You know what you live and you learn, man. You are, you, are you cool with it? Or yo, you don't let that go? You're like, nah, bro, we can't. Oh, wow, I couldn't need, I couldn't need stomach. I couldn't even stomach. Like, yeah, in the room with my boy, man. <laughs> Amen, brother. Fresh out the uh, matter of fact, I'ma just say clock out. You hear me? Clock out, the brother, man. Y'all know how I'm rocking, bro. Just finished. Uh, we we had a I ain't gonna say a long day today, but it was a, a, a pretty a, a, I say a full day. It's 707. You feel me? I ended up having a couple of late hits, but today was a full day, man. I just want to give a big shout out to the UNIV class that I spoke to today. Big shout out to um, big shout out to the teacher for for booking me in there, man. Shout out, shout out to uh, to Talvin James. You know what I'm saying? He a real when he can't got a haircut, boy. Straight up asked me. I'm said, oh yeah, we might as well. You feel what I'm saying, man? So big shout out to him, bro. But man, we had a good day today, man. And, let, let, let's just focus on the good You feel what I'm saying? So we ain't gotta focus on the bad Because I'm telling you Your, your energy matters You feel me? Your, your, your energy and whatever you focus on Is gonna thrive off of that So, so depending upon how much energy you give that, that negative And depending upon how much energy you give that positive That's gonna result in what you get out of your day you feel what I'm saying? I woke up early this morning. I know I ain't prepared for that speech, but something told me, man, today gonna be a good day. Just think positive. Just have positive thoughts. You feel me? Same thing for my test, bro. I, didn't, I wasn't necessarily in the best spirits about my test. You feel me? But I told myself, man, I'm about to pass. I told y'all pray for me. I said, I said a prayer before I went in there. Lord knows. Lord knows. You hear me? Lord knows before I turned the test in. I had to cross my heart. You feel what I'm saying? But it's like, bro, you got to realize where you putting your energy. How are you carrying yourself out here? Are you carrying yourself in a positive manner or a negative manner? You feel me? Are you, are you trying to receive good out here or are you trying to receive bad? You feel what I'm saying? Because you get what you give. I dare you come out here in this world and, 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 and be positive. I dare you hold the door for everybody you walk past. I dare you tell everybody good morning. I, I dare you put a smile on your face for everybody that walk past you. It's the energy that you carry that determines how far you go in life. I'm telling you right now, I'm today. Today, I don't care, I don't care what time you watch me, I dare you be positive. I dare you put a smile on your face. I dare you be nice to people. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying, man? But I'm going to peace y'all out right here, man. We had a good day today, bro. Y'all know how I'm rocking already, man. It's the multi-millionaire and the flesh and um. Peace.